We now live in a world where we have images and data from JWST. And now that it's started, it's not gonna stop or slow down anytime soon. While we wait for the next batch of official images or press releases, I want to show you some of the unseen images making their way online. Most of the images I have for you come from JWST scientists putting calibration or early release images on Twitter. And I'll make sure to credit them on screen and put links in the description when that's the case. I do just want to start with a couple of points about the Jupiter image we've seen from Webb. Firstly, when I made a video about this, I said that if we compare the Webb image to a Juno image, we don't see as much detail yet from JWST. While I said that, I put a picture of Jupiter from Hubble on screen rather than Juno. So that was pretty silly of me. And I just wanna show you the correct comparison. Just because these Juno images are so beautiful and to say that I think with longer exposure time, Webb will totally be able to give us images that do rival them. Secondly, it was pointed out that in the Webb image, there's this outline glow to some of the planet. And we're now pretty sure that this is Webb capturing the upper atmosphere of Jupiter. So if you wanted confirmation of how awesome Webb is, there you go. We also had good news for all of those I've seen of you getting excited for Webb to look at the planetary system TRAPPIST-1. JWST has now observed that system. We don't have images yet and it will likely go back for more, but the other day it spent five hours looking at the system, taking spectra with its NERSPEC instrument. We can see it in this Webb log here, and we can also see that Webb's already spent time looking at a supernova remnant here, an open star cluster in the Large Magellanic Cloud, M74, the Phantom Galaxy, and even more. Speaking of this Phantom Galaxy, I can actually show you one of those images right away. Also known as NGC628, this incredible shot appeared on Twitter, and it just looks stunning. Here's a comparison between JWST and the previous infrared telescope Spitzer. The improvement in resolution is really impressive. And this swirling spiral galaxy looks just like a portal across the multiverse. With the nice cavity of gas in the center too, all these extra bubbles around the image and all the flecks of red poking through as well. Here's the galaxy with Hubble and Webb data combined. A true whirling beauty. It looks like a simulation. And frankly, those people simulating the universe might now need to step up their game to compete since we can now see the actual universe in such high resolution. What about this? Do you want to see this galaxy from JWST's point of view? Of course you do. And thanks to Dr. Janice Lee from the FANGS team on Twitter, you can. Just look at how much detail we can see. It looks like the spine and nervous system of the galaxy completely light up in the infrared. The bright light coming from the center of the galaxy gets the characteristic web diffraction spikes, telling us that it's incredibly strong emission. And it might hint to an active galactic nuclei in the center. That's a hungry black hole gobbling up lots of matter. Here is a combination of both Hubble and Webb again, showing the true power of having both of these observatories online and working at the same time. Remember, these images I'm showing you in this video haven't been polished to the extreme like the officially released ones, so don't expect them to be quite the same. Lots of them are either from calibration of the instruments or their data that's only just been taken, but the images are being made and shown super quickly. So I'm sure all of them will change and improve over time as well. I'm going through them pretty quickly, so feel free to pause or follow the links in the description and have a look at them for longer if you'd like. And let me know any cool details you spot that I don't mention here. These next few are from Andres Gasper on Twitter, and they all come from the MIRI instrument, so that's mid-infrared light, meaning it's some of the longest wavelengths that Webb can see. Actually, the two previous images came from MIRI as well, so it looks like this is the team that's giving us all the early access goods at the moment. Here, the Cefer 2 galaxy, a beautiful barred spiral imaged by Hubble on the left and Webb on the right. You can see the IR wavelengths of MIRI cut through the dust much better than Hubble's visible light, and we get to see loads of detail that's missing in the Hubble image plus even a few background galaxies that we can suddenly see with Webb as well. This is just a half an hour exposure for JWST2, so to get this much detail and depth is really impressive. This calibration image was taken to study something called persistence, which is where bright images burn onto the sensors and remain seen even when it looks away. Kind of like how PC monitors can suffer if you leave the same picture on them for too long. A solution called annealing the detector was tested while looking at the Cat's Eye Nebula. That's this beautiful planetary nebula shown again by Hubble and by Webb. The annealing process involves heating the MIRI detectors all the way up from 7 Kelvin where they normally are to 20 Kelvin. Still very cold, but very hot for this detector. And then cooling them back down again. This process somehow removes the burnt-in images and resets the uniform baseline for it to start new images from. 
and this process is now being done daily to keep everything fresh. While lots of the images here come from Miri, one awesome thing seen in the NERCAM data was the discovery of a supernova. By comparing to old Hubble data, we can see the presence of a new bright spot here, and that's how you discover a supernova. Very nice. This neat gallery shows a spot on the Large Magellanic Cloud. That's a dwarf galaxy orbiting the Milky Way, and it doesn't have loads of bright stars in this particular shot. The numbers in the bottom right tell you the different wavelengths used for each image in each panel, and we can see that the structures change as we move through the wavelengths. This here is another set of Large Magellanic Cloud images, taken to test the alignment of Miri. All were taken at a wavelength of 7.7 .7 microns, except the blue coloured one, and that's taken at 5.6 microns. It's just cool to see all of the stars and dust and structure in such detail. And here's an overlap showing the two wavelengths at the same time. Next up, we have a cool shot that's towards the galactic centre of the Milky Way, and I really like the colour they've used here. Note that in these Miri images, the diffraction spikes are a slightly different arrangement. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video where we talk about why this is. Let's end on this beautiful vista, with some nice big stars and cool background features too. And remember, these images are really just from the testing process. They weren't really taken for science science, or even to really be seen by us, and they aren't process loads or always perfectly focused. Huge thanks to Team Miri for releasing loads of these images pretty early and letting us see all the extra web goodies. Be sure to subscribe if you found this fun, and follow me on Twitter with the link in the description, where I try to share loads of these images as quickly as I can when I see them. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!